You and I as believers, we should be grateful for God's grace. We should be grateful for his mercy. We should be grateful for all that God has done for us. And in all of this, you and I as sincere believers, we should be wary of becoming self-righteous. You see, self-righteousness, it is a nasty behavior. It does nothing for the one that is self-righteous. It does nothing for those that are around us as well, as we'll see here in our Sunday School lesson for today, where we take a look at God's grace, we take a look at his mercy, and we take a look at the nasty side of self-righteousness. in the opening two verses of our lesson for today, Jesus, he notices those who were self-righteous, those that scripture tells us trusted in themselves. And they, at the same time, despised others. That means that they were looking down on others. With that in mind, Jesus, he began to tell a very familiar parable about two men that went to the temple to pray. One of the men that went to the temple to pray was a Pharisee. The other that went to the temple to pray was a tax collector. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, they were highly regarded in the eyes of the people. Whereas the tax collectors, they weren't so highly regarded by the people. In fact, the people they despised, the people they hated the tax collectors. Why did the people despise? Why did the people hate the tax collectors? Well, they despised and hated them because of their work, because of their job. Now, as we'll see here in our next verse, we'll take a look at the prayers of both of these men. So we'll start off here with the Pharisees. The Pharisee there in the 11th verse we'll see in his prayer, prays about being righteous in his own eyes. Imagine praying about this. The Pharisee, he gave thanks to God for not being like other men, for not being like extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like the tax collector. Again, imagine praying this prayer. The Pharisee was giving thanks to God because in his mind, he felt that he was better than others, including the tax collector that was there in the temple that was praying to God as well. Imagine thinking that way. That's just how self-righteous this man was. Now, why did he feel this way? What made him feel that he was better than others? We'll see here as we continue on here in the 12th verse. The Pharisee prayed about how he fasted twice a week how he gave his tithe. So in other words, the Pharisee was giving thanks to the Lord. He was praying to the Lord that he was better than others because of his religion, all of his religious works, his religious practices. And to me, this is very troubling. And the reason why this is so troubling is because we see this kind of thanksgiving in the hearts of Christians today those that are all about religion rather than faith. And this is the greatest difference between those that practice religion and those that are of true faith. There are many people walking around in the world today that again say that they are believers, that they are Christians. And what is it that make them believers? What is it that make them Christians? They go to church every Sunday. They are at Bible study every Wednesday. And they do this because again, they feel that they are required to do this not that they desire to do this out of their heart. They are practicing religion and they believe that they are better than those that are around them. And I tell you today that if you are of this mindset, it's time for you to change that mindset. Now we'll see the prayer of the tax collector. The tax collector prayed out of humility. We're told here in the 13th verse that the tax collector stood away from the Pharisee and wouldn't even lift up his eyes to the Lord. The tax collector just simply beat on his chest and acknowledged he was a sinner and prayed for the Lord to be merciful to him. His prayer, excluding Jesus's prayer, is my favorite prayer that you'll find in scripture. And the reason why I say that is because of the humility that the tax collector shows us. His prayer, it is short, it's not wordy, it is very concise. It is straight to the point. What is most important about his prayer is the repentance that is shown here. He knows exactly who he is. He knows what he has done. 
and he has come to God and he is praying about that. He knows what God can do to, for him. And so I would say to all of you today that we as believers, this is our prayer. This is the prayer that we should be praying to the Lord, a prayer that is of humility, a prayer that acknowledges exactly who we are and what we have done, a prayer that shows we need the Lord. He is the example of what John wrote in his first letter. John wrote there in 1 John, the first chapter and ninth verse, that the Lord is both faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness should we acknowledge and confess our sins to him. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at the prayer, the end results of the prayer of the Pharisee, the end result of the prayer of the tax collector. Let's take a look here in the last verse of our lesson as to what Jesus said was the end result of both of these prayers. Jesus, he said that the tax collector went home justified, justified rather than the Pharisee. Can you imagine why? Jesus, he then said there in that 14th verse that those who exalt themselves will be humbled and the humble will be exalted. And I want you to understand, the only one that is going to exalt them is the Lord. The only one that can make you righteous is the one that is righteous himself. And who is it that is righteous? The Lord. We must go to God if we truly desire to be holy, if we truly desire to be righteous. We can't make ourselves holy. We can't make ourselves righteous. There is absolutely nothing that we can do. There's nothing that nobody else can do. Nothing else can do. The only one that can make you holy and righteous is the one that is divine, holy and righteous himself. That is the Lord. We must be willing to go to God. We must humble ourselves. We must be willing to acknowledge what we have done. And when we do this, I want you to understand today, regardless of who you are, whether you are of faith, little faith or no faith, God, he will be merciful. God, he will forgive you. I want you to understand today, God, he desires for us to come to him. The Lord, he desires to hear from us. The Lord, he desires to be merciful, to give us another chance, to give us another opportunity. The Lord, he desires to, again, relieve us of our debt. He desires to forgive us of our sins. So again, whether you are of faith or not, I encourage you to go before the Lord. I encourage you to be humble. And I want you to understand today that when you go before the Lord, when you acknowledge who you are, all that you have done, the Lord, he is ready to forgive you, to take away all of your sins, your guilt, your burdens. He desires to take all that away from you so that you can go about in peace. So, let us go before the Lord today, and again, let us then enjoy his forgiveness.